Hi everyone, it's Carrie, aka Nerdy Girl Creates. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is Indie Friday, but before we start on that, once again, another quick apology. Still not 100%, but hopefully next week we'll be back on track with the videos and uh, I will sound much better. So please excuse the sniffles and maybe the occasional sneeze. I will try to edit it out as much as possible. <laughs> So, it is, as I said, Indie Friday, and this week we are going to take a look at a book from Image called Nuck Terra. That's N-O-C-T-E-R-R-A. -R -R it is written by Scott Snyder with art by Tony S. Daniel. And the story focuses on a, uh, a future where the world is swallowed up in darkness. There's no sunlight, and everybody is living 24-7 in complete other night. And... The main protagonist, Val Riggs, is working as a ferryman who helps people travel across the country while also battling creatures that are the result of this darkness. It's uh, humans, animals that turn into these kind of like dark shade type creatures that attack anybody and inflict them with their infection. And she has pretty much been doing this since she was a kid when the whole incident occurred. She's also taking care of her younger brother who most people don't know is infected with this uh, disease but he's found a way to kind of like hold off the symptoms from taking him over completely. Well one day an old man and his granddaughter approach her and ask her to take them across the country to a specific location and he offers up money and she's desperately in need of it. So Reluctantly, she takes it, and it turns out this guy happens to be a scientist who was involved in the incident that caused the complete darkness across the world. Well, things go sideways. They end up getting hunted by uh, people. I'm assuming they're part of, like, the big government. I'm not sure. And her brother is at risk because he is not doing his treatments as normal to prevent himself from turning into one of these creatures of the night. And it's pretty much like this road trip for most of the book. So what did I think about it? Well, first off, I do like Scott Snyder. He's one of the few modern writers that I do like his stuff. Um, it's nice to see him try to break away and do more of his own original work. It is, um, I do have some complaints, though, with this story. Uh, the first thing is, I don't know, there seems to be, like, this big thing with comics lately where we have to do a lot of narration, like, a lot of narration, like, and at times the narration in this comic feels very redundant, like, we keep going back over the same thing again, like we're trying to build up something, and it's kind of like after a while you're like, okay, yeah, you've said this before, can we like move on with the story? My other problem is <clears throat> they do at times so much narration, I feel like a lot of it could be done in visual format, and it's it's kind of like, okay, if I wanted to read a book, I'd buy a novel. But I think a lot of it was unnecessary narration. Like, a lot of this could have just been, like, your opening and maybe your closing. But it goes on throughout the whole story. And after a while, you're kind of like, okay, why do we just have all this, like, narration going on? To me, it didn't, it, they, it's not, it wasn't even really important information that they were dropping at times in their nation. They were just, like I said, it was redundant. They were just, like, restating what they said in the beginning of the comic over and over. Because it opens with uh, the main character and her brother in school. They're in, I think she was, like, ten. And their adopted parents pick them up, and they're in the school, in the car, and she says, where, where were you when um, the sun went out? And she goes on about sitting in the back of the car, but then suddenly goes, well, that's not really where I was. And then it kind of implies, like, her mind was somewhere else, or that maybe she was actually somewhere else. And then they keep going back to that, and it's like, okay, <laughs> can we please move on? And it's like, then there's a lot of narration explaining flashbacks that are being 
illustrated out and it's kind of like I don't think we need all this narration it it, it kind of feels like all right where's the editor and can we please cut down this because it takes me out of the story I, I know I'm reading a comic I want to see the visual I don't need like a blow by blow description of what's happening in the visual when the visual itself can explain it now the main character I don't really have a problem with her I I think she is um what you would expect for this type of situation you know she's kind of like pessimistic she's not very um She's not going to be, like, happy, smiley in a, in a situation where the world isn't, like, on the edge of, like, annihilation. <laughs> uh, you know, she's she's determined to keep her brother alive despite knowing that at any second he completely turn and she'll lose him forever. And she is making all the sacrifices she can to ensure that he finds a way to cure himself. And even the slightest chance that there might be a cure out there she's going to look into it uh she uh she also is not afraid to take on the challenges i mean she might be hesitant because she doesn't want to put her brother in danger <clears throat> but she is um more than willing to put herself on the line in order to protect him now there is this little girl who is the granddaughter of this professor that she is ferrying across the country. And at, at times she kind of grates on me. It's like, you're, I don't know, she was born into this situation. So I would expect somebody to be like a lot more adapted to it. But at times it's just like, she feels like she's just like been completely sheltered. And maybe that's the case because this is only volume one. And... I don't know. It's almost like, okay, can we can we move on? And <laughs> it's like Otherwise, the story itself is really intriguing. It is a very a very interesting story. I just wish they would cut down on so much of this narration because it's really like it pulls you out of it. It does. Um you have some very interesting villains in this with this whole um mystery of what caused this disease in the darkness to infect all living creatures and turn them into these shades and how 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 can they be stopped and like where did it come from you know it's 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 different from the typical zombie apocalypse type stuff that's been kind of like oversaturated at times lately so i do kind of like where scott is going with these villains now for the art, I do like the use of colors in this. You know, it's supposed to be a world completely covered in darkness, but they use a lot of colors to kind of like emphasize that without making everything completely like black and dull. You know, there's the right use of lights and and like the right type of like darker reds and I know I always say reds, but it it's not like it's completely washed over in darkness. It's you you get this feel that they're living in a world of complete night without it looking completely black to the point you can't tell anything. The art itself is it's pretty much like the standard design of what I see a lot in comics today. It's not thing that stands out amongst the rest, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. I I do like Tony Daniels art, but like I said, it's kind of like, you know, it, it's nothing kind of original. It doesn't like, and another term I use a lot, signature style. Uh, overall, it's not a bad book. I Like I said, if they could cut down on the narration that's constantly going on in this book and maybe translate it more and, and, and feel confident enough to let the visuals tell it, it would be a better book. But compared to what you get in DC and Marvel, I feel like it is better. And like I said, Scott Snyder is probably one of the better writers in mainstream comics right now. And I'm hoping, you know, with his new venture into Substack, he might produce some really good stuff on his own. 
I think a lot more people should take chances doing more stuff on their own because when you're in DC and Marvel, we all know how that's going lately. So I did pick this up on Amazon. It is volume one of the book and it's called um, Full Throttle Dark. And like I said, it's like it's a road adventure in a dark, you know, dark world, like a future without sunlight. And it does have an interesting uh, main character. It is, um, hopefully the world building will pick up too, because pretty much it's hasn't really expanded too much on the world building since this is, seems to be going to be like a road adventure. So hopefully when I get a hold of the next volume, we'll see how that goes. So tell me, have you read Noctera? What do you think? Do you like Scott Snyder's work? Did you like Tony Daniel's art? Let me know down below in the comments section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And um, hit that notification bell so you know when I have a new video up. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.